Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here today, and today I want to talk to you about glutathione and the essential role it plays in the immune system. Now, today we're going to spend some time talking about how to increase your levels naturally from one of my, my most favorite traditional foods. Then I'm going to spend some time talking to you about uh, something known as glutathione recycling, explaining what it is, how it can help you. And then with all the talk about boosting glutathione levels, one of the things that's not talked about very much is the recycling of this antioxidant. And this is a massively overlooked part of autoimmunity and chronic disease management. Finally, the last thing I'm going to share with you is some of my favorite supplements that are needed to help assist this process of recycling within the cells of your body. Now this video is especially important if you suffer from any kind of autoimmune disorder, if you have inflammation, a neurodegenerative disease that begins uh, or has been affecting your brain and nerve system. Um, in reality, this video is important for those of us who not only want to recover from sickness, but most importantly for those of us who are also trying to prevent disease. Now, I've done a video in the past about glutathione, and so many of you uh, may want to go back and watch that video, but if you're just tuning in and joining us, glutathione is the main antioxidant that protects our mitochondria. You see, mitochondria are the little factories inside each cell of our body, and their job is to convert the nutrients we take in every single day, and then convert those nutrients into energy, or ATP. I want you to think of ATP as the energy currency that every cell in our body can use, and essentially this ATP is what keeps us alive. And without glutathione, these mitochondria are damaged uh, from free radicals, and that leaves you and it leaves me at risk for disease. So glutathione is really made up of three amino acids. It's made up of cysteine, glycine, and glutamic acid. It's made in the liver, and so if you think about where it's made, that becomes something that's very important. So in order to make glutathione, there are really three prerequisites. Number one is we have to have a healthy liver. If you're taking lots of medications, you've been on birth control pills, you have elevated liver of enzymes, you have a chronic infection, you drink alcohol on a regular basis, you're exposed to smoke, you work in a workplace that doesn't have the best air quality, you're diabetic, or anything that puts stress on your liver, that's going to affect your glutathione levels. That's going to require your liver to work harder. The second prerequisite for glutathione production is sufficient amounts of these three very specific amino acids, cysteine, glycine, and glutamic acid. This is the substrate. These amino acids are the building blocks from which glutathione is produced. So that's very important. And then the third prerequisite for glutathione production is healthy mitochondria. Now again, these are the powerhouses within your cells. And with people who have autoimmune diseases, mitochondria are destroyed. And when these mitochondria are destroyed, you shut down the internal operations of making cellular energy within the millions of cells in your body. So just to recap, you need a healthy liver, you need sufficient amounts of these amino acids which form the building blocks to production of glutathione, and you need healthy mitochondria. Now, if you look at this picture here, when we talk about glutathione, there are two main forms. There's your reduced glutathione, uh, which is known as GSH, and then there's the oxidized glutathione, which is GSSG. Now these two forms are constantly being turned into or recycled from one form into the other with the enzyme glutathione peroxidase and glutathione reductase. And so what's so exciting about this is from a nutritional standpoint, diet and specific supplements like the ones we're going to talk about here in just a few moments can be extremely helpful in supporting in, in that process of recycling the, that glutathione. Study after study shows that your body's ability to constantly take oxidized glutathione and recycle it back to its reduced glutathione is critical for managing autoimmunity. Study after study continues to show this, uh, this significant point. These enzymes, glutathione peroxidase and glutathione reductase, come into consideration when we look at how to support the glutathione system nutritionally. So again, if you're suffering with chronic health problems where you have inflammation as one of the underlying causes, um, fibromyalgia for example, lupus, migraines, constant or chronic headaches, diabetes, Hashimoto's, depression, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, neuropathy, then promoting glutathione recycling in your body, I believe, is something that everybody should be doing. By naturally supporting your recycling pathways, you'll be able to support and protect your cell's mitochondria, which are those, again, those ATP energy producing cells. You'll be able to enhance the body's and the tissue's recovery. 
you'll be able to temper the balance between two branches of the immune system, Th1 and Th2. Uh, Th1 and Th2, again, are those branches of the immune system that often, when they become lopsided or unbalanced, can promote an inflammatory autoimmune response. You're going to see that uh, supporting glutathione levels all ultimately helps boost your body's regulation. Okay, um, Whenever you're dealing with autoimmunity, your number one goal should be to identify the triggers behind the immune system, why it's doing what it's doing, and then, again, balance the branches of the immune system, dampen down the immune system reaction that's causing the damage to your body. So how do you go about supporting your glutathione levels? Well, number one, it's important that you look at the big picture. In other words, what's causing the stress in your body? Is it hormones? Is it food sensitivities? Is it a leaky gut? Is it an infection? Is it neurotransmitter imbalances? Is it adrenal function? Is it heavy metals? Is it mold, et cetera? That's the first thing you need to do. Number two is you have to give your body the building blocks to make glutathione. Now, bone broth is loaded with these amino acids, and that basically uh, is such an important part from a nutritional standpoint of how to support your body's glutathione levels. Number three, supplements to help the body convert oxidized glutathione into its reduced state. Now, here are seven supplements that I often use in practice with patients that I work with, and these are used day in and day out. So number one is N-acetylcysteine. This is a key compound to glutathione activity. It's rapidly metabolized into intracellular glutathione, meaning it gets inside the cell. Number two is alpha-lipoic acid. ALA directly recycles. It extends the metabolic lifespan of, of various other antioxidants like vitamin C and vitamin E. Uh, helps with coenzyme Q10 levels and again, it, it indirectly renews these other antioxidants, all of, again, which are necessary for the recycling of glutathione. Glutathione, I'm sorry, L-glutamine is another very, very important element to um, glutathione production. It's also very important for healing leaky gut, but without L-glutamine, you don't have glutathione. Number four is selenium. Selenium, again, activates the recycling system. Selenium is so important for so many reactions in your body it's definitely something worth considering when you're trying to support that uh, in, increased, uh, reduced glutathione levels. Number five is cordyceps. Cordyceps has also been shown to protect cells by engaging the glutathione enzyme cycle. Uh, number six is go to cola. Research again shows uh, it plays a role in not only recycling, but also increasing the quantity of glutathione. And then finally, there's milk thistle. Milk thistle, you've probably heard about, is incredibly important to supporting the liver. Uh, it's also shown to increase glutathione levels. It increases something called SOD or superoxide dismutase. Um, just has a lot of great things uh, in terms of balancing out glutathione levels and again, supporting the liver. So in closing this video, just a couple of takeaways that I want you to remember. Number one, from a dietary standpoint, bone broth can be something incredibly helpful because again, it's loaded with those amino acids, glycine, glutamine, and cysteine. Um, number two, glutathione levels are depleted whenever your body's under stress. So if your body and, and you've been battling an autoimmune disorder, you're, you're under chronic or prolonged stress, you're being exposed to a lot of environmental toxins like we all are, glutathione levels become depleted. Number three, glutathione is constantly being uh, transformed from a reduced glutathione level to oxidized glutathione. And again, it's the reduced glutathione levels that protects your cells. So that's what you want to increase. Number four, if you want to improve your recycling system and your immune system, there's two things that I believe is so important. Number one is you have to focus on increasing the quantity of glutathione in your body, but we also need to support the body with the recycling of glutathione. Again, taking that oxidized glutathione and recycling it back to the reduced glutathione. And again, this is where many supplements can help push that process along. Chronic stress, okay, whether you're chronically stressed from hormone imbalances, blood sugar imbalances, inflammation, infection, adrenal dysfunction, poor diet, alcohol, lack of quality sleep, smoke, etc. These again are all things deplete our body's glutathione levels. This again is why you need to look at the entire health picture. It's not just about taking these supplements that I've listed here, but really focusing in on rebuilding and repairing your body. Um, keeping overall glutathione levels up by supporting glutathione recycling helps buffer the body cells from the many stressors that are heaved upon it each day. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please feel free to share it with your friends, your family. Uh, if you did enjoy it, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you visit my website, you're going to find lots of additional articles there, recipes, videos 
on natural health, and ultimately how to best support your body's immune system naturally. Until next time, take care.